Hey folks, today we have a beautiful black sea bass dish that we're gonna make for you today that I know is perfect for your table. Stay tuned. So today I'm just going to walk you through how to fillet a black sea bass. A friend of ours, a commercial fisherman, went out and he scored two for me. So uh, nothing better. I'll tell you that it's a great fish. So the first thing you want to do is get your knife. Let's talk about the knife first, okay? So you're going to laugh at me because this is probably one of the cheapest fillet knives you can buy. It's a Rapala. But I'll tell you what, for the money, it's the only way to go. I fillet most of my fish with a Rapala. It's a really good knife. So the first thing you want to do is get behind the gill plate and under the fins and you always want to angle your knife forward because you don't want to lose any of this shoulder meat because there's quite a bit there and just make an incision down okay now this still is uneviscerated and then what we're simply going to do is angle the the, uh, the knife down here let me get a Grab it with a, so you don't cut it, a, a towel, and then just bring it forward. And just run that knife right down the backbone. And there you have it, a beautiful fillet. You don't leave anything on there. And then what you wanna do is skin it. So first, we'll take the ribs out. So you see the ribs are right here. So again, you just kinda get a start and angle down and get those ribs out so you don't lose any flesh. Okay. And then I use this little CUDA. I love the, the gadgets the CUDA makes. It's to grip the end of the fishtail so that you can skin it. So you just keep your knife flat, draw it forward. Okay, and then on a black sea bo uh, bass, you're gonna have a little line of bones right here, okay? So all you wanna do is find the end of where the bones are and just make a very small cut, grab that, pull it out, and you have a beautiful boneless filet that we're gonna show you very soon. It's perfect for your table. So folks, welcome back to the galley. Today's gonna to be a bit of an unusual show. We started the day by going out on the new skiff, which you'll see in the next episode or so, for winter flounder and perch, right? Yeah. What, what happened? We got skunked the old fashioned way, hard. It got cold. Um, so we just got back to the kitchen, uh, the filet table. A, a commercial friend of ours gave us two beautiful black sea bass. Uh, we had no intentions of doing a cooking segment today, but the guys kind of challenged me. So I threw some ingredients together that I happen to have here in the kitchen, and we're gonna do our best to create a dish, and then you and the skipper get to name it at the end of the show, because I have no idea what we're gonna call this. Fair enough? All right, All right. let's do it. First thing we had to do was to turn the oven to 375. We're gonna put our pan on the stove, and Jack, I want you to do this. First, you're gonna put in about two and a half ounces of pork belly, smoked pork belly, all right? And now we're gonna let that render out, okay? So I can sit there for a while, just give it a stir once in a while, Jack. Now we're gonna create the topping, okay? So the topping, I think, is gonna be, as I said, we didn't plan this. So Jack, why don't we take a, a little bit of olive oil, about a tablespoon, first right in the bowl, good. A little bit more than that. Okay, now we're gonna take, I had this sun-dried tomato uh, paste, and we're gonna squirt some of that in there. So Jack, squirt about, I don't know, 
a tablespoon of that in there. Can you rough guess it? Perfect. <laughs> and we're gonna stir that around and make sure it dissolves in. Okay, that's gonna add a lot of flavor. Then Jack, we're gonna add, what are we gonna add? We're gonna add some really high-end balsamic, aged balsamic. So put about a tablespoon into that, okay? Not a ton. Okay, good. And now we're gonna put in a healthy portion. Yeah, good job, good job. A healthy portion, say probably three tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes, right? And a little bit of the oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. Gonna let that soften up a little bit. And then we're gonna set it aside until we're ready to cook the fish. So you can see what Jack's doing here. Got that pork belly rendering out. And that will be the fat, essentially all of the fat with the exception of a little bit of sun-dried tomato uh, oil for this dish. Open up that oven, Jack, check it. Feel hot yet? There it is. I think I'm gonna win this competition. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this. So this will take, I don't know, probably three, four minutes to render out, and then we'll start the fish. How do you look at that? Good. Yeah, I, think I would say that's almost there. Almost. All right, Jack, to me that was looking pretty good. How about you? Very good. A little, little crisp, right? Yep. Now I need you to just take the, uh, take, the, take the pork out. Why don't you use this? Take the pork out, put it in this bowl, and keep the, the, the uh, uh, pork belly fat in there, okay? Because that's what we're going to use to saute the fish. Got it? Okay. In the meanwhile, here's our beautiful fillets that we uh, filleted up earlier in the show. And all we're going to do with this is we're going to take a little bit of cracked black pepper. You got it? All right, you're good. Put it back in the pan. Cracked black pepper on top of our fillets. Okay? And a little bit of, and I say a little bit because some of the other ingredients that we're going to throw together here are going to be salty and we don't want to have it overly salty. Now, Jack, what I want you to do, I'll show you one. We kind of folded them up to make a, a kind of thicker, substantial portion. We're going to take this and put top side down all three of these pieces. Yeah, you got always away from yourself so it doesn't splatter, okay? More, more gently, like that, okay? Like you'll love it, all right? We're going to saute that for about three minutes per side, okay? All right, now this has been about three minutes. So, Jack, I just need you to very, very gently flip those fillets over. Good. Gently, like you love it, right? You did wash your hands, right? I'm kidding. I saw you do it. I would have killed you. Okay, hold it, hold it together so it bundles together. And we're just going to go another three minutes on that, okay? How's that looking at? So that's another three minutes. They're not completely cooked, especially because we folded them over. So Jack, gently put those into this stainless steel pan that we're going to finish them in the oven, okay? Nice, gently, good. Hey, you're a superstar. All right, good. We're going to have to put you on a cooking show, Jack. All right, we're going to set these aside now, okay? And we're going to start finishing the garnish, I, I guess I'm going to call it. So we're going to put our pork back in. All right, Jack, what I need you to do is add the two tablespoons of minced garlic to the pan and stir it around just to smell it, all right? Now, I already talked in a previous episode to you guys about the fact that we, it's very, it's a fine line between burning garlic and making it a little crisp and crunchy, which is the way we enjoy it. So we'll just give it a little bit of time. I'm going to put a little bit more of the sun-dried tomato oil in there, okay? Help it along a little bit. Okay, all right, Jack, how we doing? Looks good. We're just gonna get a slight brown caramelization on that garlic and we'll finish this in no time at all. How's it smell? Good. Now you're always asking me, what fish do I like best? And I, my answer is generally, I like all fish as long as it's fresh. What fish do you like best? I'm a big fan of black sea bass. It's one of the first fish that I uh, caught when I went out with you guys. And you caught some dandies. 
Yeah, they were nice. Just nice knot heads. And, um, and, you know, those two fish are actually in our opening. Yeah. Right, and, so. um, you know, fun fish to eat. They're cool looking. And, um, yeah, uh, great to eat. So, yeah. All right, let's turn that up just a hair. Okay. You're doing a great job here, bud. All right, now we're going to add, keep stirring, we're going to add about two tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes. Stir that on in. Okay. Let it cook a little bit more. And I talked about the fact that we're going to not season it heavily with salt because we're going to add a couple of salty ingredients, and here they are. We're going to add about a tablespoon or a heaping tablespoon of capers, which are definitely salty, so when I take them out, I rinse them a little bit in water. Just put that in there. Then I have these awesome tasting dry cured olives that are going to really set this dish apart. We're going to put, I don't know, maybe two tablespoons of that in there. All right, Jack. And then just a little bit of parsley. Okay. Yeah, got it. All right, now Jack, what I want you to do is I want you to spoon that evenly on top of this fish. Okay, go ahead. Oh wait, I forgot the I forgot the best part. This aged balsamic. See, this is what happens when you don't plan a recipe; you're just doing it off the cuff. So we're gonna add about two tablespoons of this beautiful aged balsamic vinegar from Medina's. Okay, about two tablespoons. Nice. Now let's let that cook a little bit, turn the heat up. Heat up high, right? Looks good, Jack. So now, one of the important things I've always talked about with cooking, especially um, fresh fish, you gotta taste it, right, before we move forward with it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself on a limb here, and I'm not gonna taste it. I'm gonna have you taste it and tell me what it needs. All right. All right. Kind of get an equal, equal portion of all. How is it? Great. Great? Yeah. All right, good. Now what I would like you to do is take this spoon and put equal amounts of that on top of our cooked fish, okay? Beautiful. What do you think so far? This looks pretty darn good, huh? I'm liking it a lot, actually. All right, spread all that evenly. Once you get it on top of each, just throw the rest in there, throw the oil in there as well. Can you taste the pork? Absolutely. I'll just give me the rest of it. I'll finish this off. There it is. Now we're just going to finish it in the oven. But you know what? I just had an idea. A couple episodes ago, we made uh, saffron uh, bisque. Get my saffron back here. This is going to top it off. This is a good idea. All right, you know what saffron is, right? Of course. All right, so this is the good stuff. So we're going to take a little bit of saffron and just sprinkle the tops, which is going to not only add flavor, but it's going to add some beautiful color. Okay. Okay. There we go. That should be enough. All right. Now, Jack, I just want to put that in the oven. We're going to let it, I'm going to say less than five minutes because I hate overcooked fish and we'll plate it up and have you taste it and name it with the captain. All right. All right put it. All right, buddy, do me a favor. Let's pull it out of the oven. Let me check it. It's been about six minutes. Pull that out, set it right up top. And then I'm going to take over, and then you get prepared to name it. Sounds okay? good. You see that saffron in there? And we're going to finish it with a little bit more fresh parsley on top. And a little bit of fresh basil. So you got to take into account here all the ingredients going in. you you got a hard job here naming this, i got to tell you. All right, as you can see, what I did is add a little rice. It's kind of a Mediterranean-inspired dish, or at least that's the way I'm seeing it. So uh, garnished it with a little basil, put a little rice under it. I was okay. hoping to have winter flounder. Well, okay, go ahead. Instead, or perch. Yeah. Hang on, don't try, no, I don't want you to try it Instead, yet. we got skunked. Yeah, like, I guess This looks try. really good. I thought you would I talk mean, about the wine first. Well, yeah, in a second. All I just right. wanted to talk about our failed fishing trip. It's March, what, 26, Jack? I was yeah. trying to divert you from talking about the failed fishing trip. Well, <laughs> Tom's River loaded with bunker. Uh, last night, Mike and I did catch some stripers behind the house on some um, some sheds, right? Some yeah, swimming yeah, sheds. Yeah. Paddle sheds, I should talk, say. Yeah. Uh, but today was just complete failure. Nothing. Tons of bunker, tons of bait in the water, but nothing was 
willing to bite. We're going to talk about our anchor mishap. And we lost an anchor. The but we bought a new one, a better one. It got cut clean. The rope got cut clean. I don't know how. All right, boys, give it a whirl. And I want your honest feedback. Mm. It tastes of saffron. Yeah. And it, look, it Topping looks... it like that was good. I'm going to get a little bit of the toppings you have here. Sun-dried tomato, olives, the basil, the capers. Garnish makes it for sure. Mm. Right. Set your plates down. I want you to drink a little wine with your bite. Or actually, here, you don't even have to uh, set, set it down, all right? So talk about your wine, man. I'll hold it up for you. This is a Portuguese wine. It's a red. When Mike said he was going to use balsamic vinegar, and decided not to go with white, go with the red. This is called Cartuja. It's a very good Portuguese wine, dry. I, I like to call it relaxing. It's not... I'm helping myself out a little bit. That's more. fine. Right. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Jack? Now let's taste the wine. What do you think, Jack? You're, you're, you're good with wine. Tell me what you think. And how does it pair with the dish? How did Danny do? Pretty good. You know, it matches... You know what? It paired well. I'm sorry, yeah. Jack. No, it matches with the vinegar and the whole, you know, the whole complex flavor well, you know? Yeah. And, and Danny and I talked when we went to the liquor store. He's, he was thinking of white wine. And, and I said, you know what? The, an appropriate flavored uh, red wine is, is perfect with this dish. So uh, he picked a winner here as far as I'm concerned. So... All right, the moment of truth, boys. What are we naming this dish? Go ahead, Jack. Well, you know, um, I really think it's balsamic. Even though there's a lot of different ingredients, I really think it's the balsamic that brings it all together. Okay, fair point. So, I think we should call it Barnica Bay Black Sea Bass Balsamic. No. Barnica Bay Balsamic, balsamic Black Sea Bass. Sea bass. Bar yeah, Barnica right. Bay That's Balsamic better. Black Sea Bass, all right? Even hey. though we do catch a lot of... Sea bass in the Barnet Cafe, never a keeper. So how did I do on my challenge from you two boys? Awesome. Bring in two fish and said make a show. What's for dinner? <laughs> You're eating it. You're right. So listen, folks. Uh, this has been Chef Mike, Captain Dan, and our first mate, Jack, from the Tide to Your Table. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the water soon. And practice catch and release or selective harvest. Keep our waterways healthy for our children and Jack's children to come. Cheers.